this morning. Uh, a special welcome to those who are visiting with us. If you'd like to take a moment to fill out a yellow card, uh, they're found in your pew. For regular attenders and members, please take a moment and fill out the red pew pad uh, that's found on either side of your pew. Uh, this morning we're talking about the kingdom of God and the surprises that the kingdom of God brings. And so you'll hear about that uh, in the midst of our sermon. You'll find the entire worship service up on our screen. And we're glad you're here with us. We continue our worship service. You are so good to me. 
Let us pray. Dear good and gracious God, we thank you for the good gifts that you've given us. Please help us to be surprised by the good gifts so that we may go out into the world and share your surprising love and grace with the people that we meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. be with you always. Please share that peace with one another. forward. Children, Keegan, stay right here. Come on, you're already here. Come here, Sophie. I'm five years old. You're six, right? All right. Hey, uh, if I, um, who's here eaten an apple before? Hmm? Raise your hand if you've eaten an apple. That's right, Tate, you've probably eaten an apple, right? You can't eat an apple right now because you are teeth challenged at this point, right? The, um, well, if you, what happens if you leave an apple on, on a shelf for a long time? It gets rotten, that's right. You know, a, f a few days, a week for sure, it gets rotten. And it gets brown. And it, yeah, first it gets brown and then it gets mushy, right? 
and then it starts to smell, and it even gets wet, right? Doesn't it? You ever seen that happen to an apple? Have you ever left an apple in a, in a basket of apples, and one goes bad and see what happens? If one of those apples goes bad, gets soft and, <coughs> and mushy like that, it makes all the other apples in that basket go bad that much faster. So that's why we have a saying, one bad apple ruins the whole bushel, right? You ever heard that before? So sometimes that's happened for potatoes too. When you open up a potato thing, and there's one ucky bad t potato in there, and it, all the potatoes around it have gone bad because of that one bad potato. That's kind of, that's kind of odd, huh? Well, you know the other end of that though is, if we want to drink some apple cider, we got to have one bad apple go bad in order to make all those other apples go bad. And then something really good. Who's drank apple cider before? Oh, yeah, apple cider is wonderful. But in order for it to happen, we got to have one bad apple go bad. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry, sir. Yes? No, we don't want rotten bananas for, ro for banana bread. But sometimes things have to, sometimes things do go rotten, but, and they even die. But in their death, there's new life. And that's, and that's the story of the church, that we don't fear death. In death, there's new life. Let's say a prayer. God, we give thanks for all the goodness of your creation. Help us trust that for every death, you have declared life, and life wins. Amen. Thanks, boys, girls. And you're going to follow Miss Alicia, who is exactly where she should be right now. <laughs> you see her out there? Don't let her out of your sight. Go get her. And they'll be back uh, right before communion to take communion with you and receive a blessing. We have uh, David and his dad giving some special music today.
Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in its field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of flour until it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid, then in his joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all of this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out in his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Wow. There ought to be a way we could fix all that up there, shouldn't there, Howard? <coughs> Excuse me. That up. A bug in my throat here. Uh, Kingdom of Heaven, like a little seed. Like a little seed that when planted on the edge of a garden, uh, grows into this plant that is three feet, then six feet, and then nine feet, and then fills the entire garden and creates a space for w birds to live abundantly within it. In fact, a farmer in Jesus' day wouldn't have planted that little mustard seed in their garden because that little seed grows three feet, and then six feet, and then nine feet, and takes over their entire garden. They treated it like a weed. They pulled it out when they saw it. It wasn't what they wanted. A few years ago, we, um, we got rid of our uh, lawn care company, Chemlon, which they don't call Chemlon anymore because chemicals you don't want on your lawn. Now it's true green, but we got rid of them. They weren't doing a good job, blah, blah, blah. So we were going to do it on our own. And then, of course, I didn't do anything at all. And so this little bit of crabgrass ended up taking over our yard. A little bit of crabgrass started in the corner, and you leave it go for a year. And, and, and the whole yard... And this isn't what a yard in Pickerington, Ohio is supposed to look like. It's not supposed to be full of crabgrass like that. And I was upset, and, and I stepped back, and then I thought about it, and I go, well, wait a minute now. In southern Florida, this is exactly what a good-looking yard looks like. They grow crabgrass down there, and they call it a lawn. Maybe this is exactly what God intended. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is like a little bit of crabgrass that starts in the corner of your yard and before you know it takes over your suburban lawn and you realize the goodness of God's creation. My wife said no, I was crazy and then we got True Green back and now taking care of our lawn. The kingdom of heaven is like a little bit of yeast that if you mix in with three measures of flour, it makes enough in that 50 pounds of flour flour and water to rise and make a fluffy bread. Loaves enough to feed 150 hungry people. Not just a little, but abundantly. In fact, Jesus wasn't the first rabbi to talk about yeast in the midst of his stories. If you look at Old Testament scripture, yeast comes up several times. 10, 12 times, in fact. And rabbis before Jesus wrote about yeast. But whenever they talked about yeast, it was always a negative thing. It was a corrupting influence that yeast has. It changes something. If you just let a little bit of yeast into something, it changes everything. Kind of that one bad apple ruins the whole bushel metaphor that we just talked about in the children's sermon. But Jesus takes that yeast metaphor that was common in his day and turns it upside down and says, now wait a minute. Maybe the change that a little bit of yeast brings to something is good. It's full of goodness. 
So uh, in the winter weekends, my wife, who's a wonderful cook, uh, makes big pots of soup. And, and then our kids come over and we watch football and we eat these pots of soup and friends eat it. Uh, enough for everybody, an abundance of it. And if it's chicken or turkey uh, stock that she uses for the soup, uh, right at the end of cooking it, she'll throw in a couple dollops of horseradish into it and mix it in. Now, I wouldn't use horseradish to clean my shoes, and uh, although I think it could do a good job. I don't even like to open up the jar of this stuff. But when you add it into chicken noodle soup right at the end, it gives it a zest and a zing that, that's really wonderful. So the kingdom of heaven is like a big pot of soup that a sly wife put a tablespoon of horseradish in, and the unexpected, unsuspecting husband said, this is the best bowl of soup ever. Usually when we play with these two parables, about yeast and about uh, mustard seeds, we emphasize the kind of the slow plodding growth that a little tiny seed becomes a great big tree, as the parable says. Or that the yeast slowly works its way through all that dough and it grows into something wonderful, right? Kind of the, the slow, constant nature of it. You, you don't judge something by what it looks like now. Something small can become something great if God wants it to. Churches love to see themselves in this sort of parable, right? Fifty years ago, Messiah worshipped in French run. Uh, and now, look at us. We're a big red brick church on a hill in Reynoldsburg. Churches sound triumphant when, when they do this. The church sounds triumphant. Two thousand years ago, a guy named Paul scattered a little bit of churches around the Mediterranean. And, and now, look at us. We're a billion Christians with millions of churches all across the world. Not bad ideas. Definitely wise not to judge something by its size right now. That's for sure. And if God wants to take something small and blow it up into something big, wonderful. But that's not the emphasis or the focus of these two parables that Jesus is trying to get across. It's not the slow plotting growth that he's teaching about. It's the surprise at the end. Who would have thought that something delightful would come into a farmer's field from this invasive weed? Who would have thought that something delicious could be made? We, we were happy just having flat bread, and who knew that fluffy bread tastes so much better? The real surprise, even, is what Jesus compares the kingdom of heaven to. You would think he would compare it to something grand and glorious. But instead, he, he compares it to a weed or bacteria. That's not expected at all. And it's the hiddenness and the secretness of this that makes it such a great surprise. You know, if you read the Greek, it, the baker actually hid the yeast into that dough. <laughs> Weeds start out, and you don't think they're going to do anything at all, and before you know it. They've taken it over if you don't keep your eyes on them. Once you know they're there, then you can see them. But if you don't know they're there, they're easy to miss. So this parable becomes an answer for people that say, where's God? In the midst of the tragedies of my life, it feels like God has checked out, taken a cigarette break, and has forgotten all about me. And this parable says, no, the kingdom of heaven is all around us working right now. Where's God when your spouse dies? God is in the kingdom of heaven. That weeds, those weeds that come and prepare the funeral dinner for you and your family. That yeast that, that sends cards of condolences and phone calls of care. Those branches that embrace you into a grief care group in the months afterwards. The risen worship of an All Saints Sunday service where we remember the joy and the goodness of God in this world. The kingdom of heaven, it's all around us, in, under, and through. And once, once we start noticing how this yeast and these weeds are working, we can't help but see it in the world around us. And we can start making up our own kingdom of heaven parables. Kingdom of heaven 
is like a brand new teacher, a green and inexperienced that they give the worst classroom to because that's what you do to new teachers. And at the end of the year, she has a group of 30 students who are motivated and excited to learn. Who would have thought that somebody so inexperienced and young could be such a change agent? The kingdom of heaven is like an 80-year-old man who lived 60 years of his life in, in one apartment in New York City, a quiet, unassuming life, and at his funeral, they were amazed that 500 people showed up. <laughs> who knew that this quiet man had touched in powerful ways so many people? The kingdom of heaven is like a, a man who begins stuttering at four as a result of malaria and is the source of ridicule and bullying his entire life because of this great stutter and becomes a beloved country singer named Mal Tillis who uses his source of shame for a good gift in God's world. The kingdom of heaven is like a, 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 a woman who is an alcoholic, who is promiscuous, who is an atheist, uh, who can't seem to say three words in a row, and one of them isn't a curse word that I couldn't say right now, who is six feet tall and tatted up. And now this woman, her name's Nadia Bose Weber, is one of the most popular Lutheran pastors, writing books that are in the New York Times bestseller, and having conferences that attract not just Lutherans, but Christians all over the place. And you know what her message is? The surprising gifts of the kingdom of heaven. You can't make this stuff up. The kingdom of heaven is this yeast and these weeds that are moving in around us. The kingdom of heaven comes from a God who planted a weed on the corner of the lawn of the Roman Empire <laughs> and watched that weed spread from Israel beyond. The kingdom of heaven is a gift from a God who infected the religious establishment built on laws and judgment <laughs> and surety about who God is as long as God stays in this box and blew it all up with Jesus and forgiveness and grace. We've got kingdom of heaven stories all around us. The kingdom of heaven is like a church that did not want to die. 50 people in worship one year, 40 people in worship the next year, 30 people in worship the next year. And the reason is, is because their members are literally dying and there's no one else replacing them. And they fought and they fought and they got... And then finally one Sunday, they believed in the resurrection. And they decided death couldn't be that bad. It wouldn't be the last word. So they died. They sold their property, their land, and they spent 60 joyful days giving away every bit of that money to ministries of Christ around them. The kingdom of heaven is like a woman with Job-like experiences in her life that comes and joins a church and because of her generosity, her smile, her willingness to be vulnerable and to be caring for people who are grieving themselves like she has become not a source of pity for that church but a source of inspiration and her courage. The kingdom of heaven is like a 35-year-old mother whose husband suddenly leaves her and she is left to raise her son on her own and she has no money and she goes to a food pantry and lives off the care of that food pantry for months and now at 75 runs a food pantry herself being a gift of generosity and care for people in need you can't make this stuff up this is how God works in under and through this world. God takes something that is ordinary and predictable and makes it something extraordinary. Not necessarily what we'd want, a lawn full of crabgrass, but maybe exactly what this world needs. Amen.
give you thanks that you have given us a gift of grace, a gift of life, life declared in the midst of death. May we be surprised by the unexpected beauty of your heaven that surrounds and envelops us in the midst of this kingdom of, of man. May we know and trust that your will will be done in our lives, in this world, in this creation, and that we are along for the ride, experiencing your grace and love in every breath we take. Help us trust this, God. May we be people who bring healing to this world, especially to those in need. Pray for Keith and Denise and Meg. We lift up also Mary Lou Mansfield and others named aloud now. set before us of bread and wine that you have promised with your love and with your life to make extraordinary by your presence. We trust the promise that Jesus gave on the night in which he was betrayed, where he took bread and broke it and gave thanks, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a sign of the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this wine, we proclaim the very mystery of faith, that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Come, Spirit, come into our lives, filling us with your love. Come, Spirit, come in, through, underneath, around us, so that we're enveloped with the weeds of your goodness, filled and puffed up, with the yeast of your love. Come, Spirit, come into this community today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The good this is meal we brought forward for everyone to eat. Have a seat now, we'll commune our ministers and then they'll bring this meal forward.
Please stand. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Uh, just a couple announcements before we scatter this morning. You can get the August newsletter uh, out in the Welcome Center um, on your way out. So if you didn't get that by email, you can grab a, a hard copy there on the desk in the Welcome Center. Uh, also, we're collecting school supplies uh, as a way to help those that aren't able to buy them on their own. So they'll, they'll be given to some of our clients at Joseph's Coat and, and their children. Uh, and uh, so we're having that on August 17th. So on Sunday, we're going to bring what we've collected, uh, bless those supplies, and then send them out so the people uh, that need them are able to get them. We're also having a blessing of backpacks uh, that morning as well. So if you are a, uh, a kid who's in school, bring your backpack. We'll bless you and your backpack, uh, either right before school starts or for some of you, school will already have started. So... Uh, that's on August 17th. Next week is Mission Trip Sunday, so all the youth that have been on mission trips this summer are going to share their experiences. You'll see videos and, uh, and stories from them, so, so come and hear about that um, because uh, many of you, whether you went on the trips or not, were a big support to us uh, over the course of the year, so come and hear about the wonderful things that happened uh, in North Dakota and in Philadelphia. I think that's it for the announcements. Check out the bulletin board. Uh, check out the Welcome Center on your way out. Why don't we bow our heads for the benediction? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. One thing I did forget, uh, Yogi Jeffy, say hi, Yogi, wave your hand. 
Yo <laughs> Hi, Yogi. <laughs> Yogi became a, a U.S. citizen a couple weeks ago, a week and a half ago, on the 18th, and so we congratulate her. <laughs> Alex did before. <laughs> Alex did uh, about a year ago, and, and Yogi follows suit uh, a week and a half ago. So shall we sing our final song?
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And next week, bring a friend. friend. What?